Hello and welcome to another episode of Insider Investing. We often think of venture capitalists as somebody who who gives money to entrepreneurs. But often there are venture capitalists who are entrepreneurs in their own right. Building out a venture capital fund from scratch has its own set of challenges. raising capital at the same time deploying capital getting access to the best entrepreneurs coaching those entrepreneurs uh, along their journey and in india especially the struggle of evangelizing a new asset class like venture capital among domestic investors now there's someone who i've seen do this exceptionally well uh, he's somebody i've known since 2009 he founded uh, bloom ventures uh, right after the global financial crisis along with sanjay nath in doing that i think he opened up india's eyes to a whole new asset class and birthed maybe hundreds of new entrepreneurs some of whom we know exceptionally well as being unicorn founders today please welcome on this episode of insider investing kartik reddy founder and managing partner at bloom ventures Hi Karthik uh, and welcome to this uh, episode of Insider Investing. Uh it's so good to talk to somebody I've known for so long but we've never had this conversation. So it's going to be really interesting for me. Uh Karthik I'll kick it off by this you know one thing that consistently comes across when people talk about Karthik Reddy. You know this uh, this most loved VC. I actually googled for it and uh one of the first few hits that you see is this a uh, note on by sajit on his bloom journey so yeah. it's it's amazing how how entrepreneurs how the ecosystem has associated uh, this most loved term with bloom and specifically with you so that that's incredible for me but you know one of the things that i've seen from the early days and especially 2008 9 10 when you folks were ideating setting up is you're as much if not more an entrepreneur than a vc uh yeah. and you know i want to talk about that journey what got you started into this uh, space you were doing really well in a professional career at bennett um from there to give it all up uh and and begin bloom yeah. in a time when people didn't care much for the asset class yeah no i think um thanks for having me sandeep so first um, it's been fantastic to have your support uh as a part of ifl wealth before your deserved journey started uh for the same period of 10 11 years that we've been around uh it was almost like a day one introduction and uh you know it's great to have people who have that belief and support in you through the journey so thank you for that um and uh, the entrepreneurial journey um it's a partly i think dna so i come from a family of entrepreneurs on both sides um i wouldn't say very successful on one side i won't i won't out which part of my family and uh, <laughs> actually very successful on the other side and i'd seen both uh, both extremes i've seen like yeah. um, so relative to most uh, folks i've seen in my college lives after stepping out of home for the first time at the age of 17 uh, i realized how privileged i was at one level right uh, so very good upbringing in chennai good schools uh, you know got a chance to go to the best colleges go abroad um and so there's there was this itch to be an entrepreneur for a long time because that i guess it gets ingrained in the dna but there was also this fear of um having to deal with everything that's the complexity of india to be honest so yeah. you know when you when you actually and, and most of the entrepreneurs that i know uh, in the 80s 90s which i witnessed were like hardcore danda entrepreneurs and in fact most of the money people made were actually in infrastructure businesses uh mm-hmm. real estate and uh, construction and you look at the grime of it in more uh, philosophical ways than simply the dust and and, and material and as like this is not for me i can't do this yes. right i i can't uh, not that i don't have the courage to be uh, sort of ruthlessly 20 hours a day at it for a decade which i think you know uh, if anything i'm proud of that over the last 10 years yeah which you have um, been in any way yeah and and so it wasn't the fear of the work that it takes to be an entrepreneur it was under what terms can i control any of the terms of my entrepreneurship and um to me some of them were very jarring and the world has changed a lot india has become cleaner as a business place mm-hmm. but it was very natural in that era to think of how to operate 
within the system cutting corners right mm-hmm. you've been a witness to an ifl journey you're yourself an entrepreneur you've been a part of the co-founding team so you've seen that from the 2000s there have been various options to build uh you know to your vision very cleanly uh very ambitiously compete with the best in the world um it didn't seem like that at least when i was growing up to be mm-hmm. honest mm-hmm. so the the escapism of that was hey i i do fairly well in school so i can just keep getting grades and the job market is picking up so you know you were yeah. tempted to basically go and solve for the job market uh, you know and 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 get a better and better gig uh, you'll never make as much money perhaps but you will have the satisfaction of working with good people etc and that kept me going uh, mm-hmm. then and sitting in the us in 2004 2003 those those genes started expressing themselves so i was actually cleaning up my parents are moving so i was cleaning up everything in their home last weekend uh, and, and oh, that, like boxes and boxes and boxes of my history were coming up <laughs> so <laughs> what's fresh in my mind is my there were two files around my uh, startup which i incorporated in delaware it was called crick tv right? crick tv it was what, what was yeah, crick tv was, doing it was supposed to um, take a uh, internet rights for broadcast of cricket all over the world and show oh. it to north america basically oh, amazing uh, so willow was doing it uh, mm. it was not like and i was a customer of willow mm. but i felt like there was a big market and the idea was to extend that to uh, my the other proxy name which i had uh, which is still have folders in my email box from 18 years ago was zata so, so the brand was zata okay and it was pre youtube so it was like you know you thought of content yeah. being democratized and it came from you know uh, dish tv in the us doing that for actually all yeah. uh, there was a dish in the us also by the way right. and they actually brought all um, ethnic content to the us mm-hmm. and because dth all up for a very different type of distribution from cable correct over the air one transponder and you can get to it and that was the predecessor to the internet so i started playing with this idea and i said hey i'm under equipped for this what the hell was i thinking and after 2 years pretty much after burning through all my savings uh, at that juncture i realized that i wasn't equipped for it. I, i needed a tech co-founder you need you need to have the skills to be able to really build something memorable you can go through the grind of saying i don't know anything i'm just a good businessman mm. but that's not the kind of entrepreneurship i'm a fan of to be honest mm. right so mm. and, and we made and we'll come to mistake sections but remind me of one and that's always like when you find a co-founding team you can't find and fund teams which you have been guilty of having a flaw in your own journey yeah which is which is what that was yeah so i kind of half heartedly played that out till 5 or 6 and then when my company got acquired i started thinking of moving back to india and the wife said look you've already destroyed whatever it will be you're not you're not going down the entrepreneurial route again you please get yourself a job huh. right and there were enough risks in bringing her back after 12 years of her staying in the us too so mm-hmm. stuck to the jobs uh, and stuck to what i'd like to do uh, so in the middle of my jobs i've tried to stay close to industries That's or nice. sectors that i want to be in touch with right uh, nice. so whether it was technology banking or whether it was uh, fintech or whether it was media tech the idea was to stay as close to it and mm. this wave of what i wanted to do in bloom started in us because i landed in 99 2000 and got enamored by what the internet can do to change the mm. world mm. right and the challenge was always uh, while i got seduced into one idea the challenge was how will you become a great entrepreneur right in this <laughs> doing this and that was never clear it wasn't it wasn't clear in my head yeah. uh, and so in some sense you you i think you if you're patient enough you playing the real real long game which mm. is what entrepreneurship is uh, it, i think you just have to wait for the right moment and for me um, uh, i crept back and i think venture capital for me was always a way of getting the pleasure one degree removed of pretty much dealing with every cool idea that i can witness in the world mm. right inside right. of my domain right you don't have to be stuck to one and slog for 20 years to build a iconic company That's of course right. that has its own charm you're a pedestal you're on a pedestal as an entrepreneur but you know can i set up something which stands for that which backs mm. such founders right and and uh, if you ask me late stage doesn't appeal to me for all those reasons because you're not a, you, then you're a money manager you're a fund manager right yeah. you don't get the thrill of sharing that entrepreneurial ride with the early stage early journey of the founder right. which is what i do what i do uh, for a living for 
I don't do it because I'm a money manager. I do it because I get the pervasive, you know, the the perverse pleasure of actually watching uh, entrepreneurship unfold in front of my eyes for the right. first two three years of a journey in something almost always which doesn't exist in the world. Yeah, yeah. That that kind of vantage point is rarely available to a lot of people, right? And I I yeah. see I see it's why it's a privilege. I think yeah to be a part of yeah. that ecosystem. <laughs> yeah. But Karthik, I mean, uh, you know, there are many ways that you could associate with entrepreneurs. You could support them in different ways. But I think you chose one of the sort of approaches, which is really the hardest. And today it doesn't seem so hard. But back then in 2009, uh, you know, we were coming off uh, the worst financial crisis we had seen in our lifetimes. And yeah. um, I still remember like going along for meetings with you and uh clients telling us that look 2006 i invested in this venture capital fund this that Correct. that money is never going to come back and uh you know why would i even touch you with a barge pole and then to explain the 220 fee structure uh <laughs> so you're telling them that look you've not made money uh i will make money but before that i will charge some fees to you and it's a really hard place uh yeah. i i i in fact think that such a a fund of this stage hadn't really been raised at scale in India at that point in time. That's great. That's great. We were the uh, first to do 100% Indian money too. Yeah. Absolutely. And so in a way, you were like sort of convincing a whole new class of investors to invest in this asset class for the very first time. And you know what happened, like we went through after that when drawdowns would get uh, recalled yeah. and people yeah, wouldn't yeah. honor and call for yeah. liquidity, etc. So how, yeah. how was that entire process of educating Indian investors about this asset class? I think it's one of the four or five different uh, so, social sector goods that bloom in <laughs> this country. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take credit for it. And uh, I know you you enabled 125, 150 meetings as a group. Uh, unknowns to you, um, I think we did a total of 600 pitches. Wow, and I'm not talking about... Yeah, I'm not talking about multiple pitches to the same person. If you add those, it's probably 1,200. But basically... And I, I, I now think about it, and I was like, where did I find the time? Like, you know, we did this in two years flat, right? Yeah. And, and there were days where, you know, one of your colleagues would take us to Goa and we would do five. So that explains the pace. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, but we pitched in Goa, we pitched in Pune, we pitched in Chennai. We got like zero counts on a lot of them. So we converted 75 of them. And the, the ratio explains the question that you had. Mm. Uh, people heard us out. They might have thought these guys are sincere. They might have thought these guys are stupid. Sincerely stupid uh, that they think they can actually make this work. Uh, but, you know, I think, um, you know, your validation as I feel well, you know, somebody calling, um, you know, someone like a Harsh Mariwala, someone calling a GV Prasad, the Freddy Labs. Basically, we, like every entrepreneur, we shamelessly leached off these brands, right? Mm. So we got the first five or 10 and we, we just plonked their brand names everywhere. Said, look, hey, these people mm. believe in us. Uh, and we just iteratively built, it took us four closes to get to 100 crores. Yeah, now, some yeah. small young company raises 100 crores in like a week, right? Yeah. Uh, and four closes, 21 months. So I think it's like this obsession of an entrepreneur, right? And you've met gazillion entrepreneurs, you're being one yourself. So you know the feeling now, uh, not that you didn't know it in Nayak as well, that aapko karna hai to karna hai, right? So you essentially, uh, you say that like, I have such strong conviction in what I think will happen in the next decade mm. that I will sell. I will sell no matter how many times I'm beaten and chased away from doors. Mm. And um, I think that's what kept us going. And so as the for an entrepreneur, think about a seed entrepreneur back then used to raise one, two, three crores at most. Right. Okay. Very different era. Yeah. And for us, similarly, I think every time somebody, you walked out of a room and they said, chalo, ek crore karte hain. Mm. It gave you momentum for another month. Mm. Correct. That, it's a that, small win. That right? That's what okay, keeps you going. Yeah, the entrepreneurs yeah. are entrepreneurs are that way. It, essentially, you need small wins to keep you going, Absolutely. right? The, yeah. It's laden with potholes. It's laden with like you know a, a stress, but the small wins keep you going, and I think that's what allowed us to keep going. And you're right. The asset class, even today. I, I tell LPs, there is like, well, how come India didn't return money for a long time? Why are things changing now? I said, look, you know, uh, we were all faking until we made it in some sense, mm. right? Mm. Uh, there was, there was mm. the, the IPOs are starting now. 
It's been yeah. 13, 14 years since these companies have been invested in or started, right? Correct. So uh, only now are they making it. So even the best of the funds, best of the entrepreneurs were struggling because the necessary ingredients for these to take off hmm. were not necessarily in place. You were just waiting for that infrastructure to fall in place magically one day. Yeah. And honestly, that happened only in 15, 16. Um, uh, we, I think we'll have outstanding funds, uh, returns in fund one and the extension. But it's taken much longer. So the IRRs will dip a little, right? I would, would I have been happy with 25% plus IRR? Yeah. Will I end up with 20% IRR? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but I think we, the belief is playing out and which is what I think in any one of your listeners or India should take pride in. That it was a tough slog. We were all five years ahead of ourselves. But if that five years of infrastructure laying on one end of the pipe had not happened, Mm. There was no way the entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurial energy that got unleashed in 16 could have taken advantage of a geo and a UPI. Mm. Correct. You, you had to build the rails on every front. So yeah. We didn't have a USPS yeah, that an Amazon absolutely. had. Yeah. We didn't have dark fiber that you know a Netflix had. Correct. Right. You're building all the rails in parallel. So it's literally like they say, you're falling off the thing and you're actually weaving the parachute. That's what we all did. Mm. Right. We mm. all jumped off a hundred planes. And we are just trying to build the parachute before we land. Yeah. And it, finally, it feels like it's worth it because 10 years later, the parachute's are all safe landing. And I think it's going to be a phenomenally interesting journey for the next set of entrepreneurs, both fund managers and investors uh, and investee companies who are now jumping into the journey. And I think it, the, the, the hard work's been done by both sides. Oh, absolutely. For and the rest. Next decade you know, to think- enjoy uh, so, and I completely agree, you know, the, the, the kind of intense slog that you guys did at that point in time. And, you know, it's like not very different from any other business, right? When you, when uh, a new sort of user is coming onto a platform or a new platform, the user knows that this is an early stage company. So therefore there will be issues uh, in the product. Uh, and in many ways, these are like the early adopters are enthusiasts, right? And in I, I I see that like in in the early set of investors who came in into Bloom, they yeah. came in. I mean, return was probably one of the reasons. I think That's the right. whole thing that there is a great team which is starting up and doing something. That excitement of backing folks like you was yeah. was interesting. And the second thing was they also wanted to back entrepreneurs in the Indian ecosystem. That's right. So I think so much of that is also because of, you know, those early enthusiasts who came Absolutely. in. Absolutely. There, there are one or two people who said, I don't know whether you'll succeed, but I'm writing this off as I give you the check, right? Yeah. Uh, there's another person who said, after two years also, they said, um, you think you'll return our money? And I said, yeah, I hope in spades. And he said, it's okay. I'm budgeting only cash back, no gains on this. I said, I'll prove you wrong someday. I love the fact that the bar is so low. I'm going to beat this bar, right? And, yeah. and so it's 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 good and bad. You're right. It's it's basically early adopters are a generous lot. They were a equal and of our angel investors. Right. And I've I've said this in a different way, Sandeep, and you probably heard me say it as well. That fund was the equivalent of our seed round. Hmm. Right, friends, yeah. family, seed as actually who's helped us on that. All yeah. club together to give hundred crores. Then came, and like the the government entity which gave also it's like a quasi grant. And this is what happens in early stage startups. Yeah, right? uh, uh, they hounded us for ten years before to give our money back, but we knew that they were being just generous out of a government pool, right? And I'm happy that I've now returned the taxpayer money in spades, and there's more to give back. Yeah, but, uh, so, and then the fund one, fund two became like a series A round. Yeah. You got your first institutional investor, you got other pylon investors, etc. Then the fund three, which we, we've just completed investing out of, was like a series B round. And now we're finally raising uh, a series C ish round, basically. Yeah, which is so almost which all is institutional our, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, still a mix, but it's almost like a pro rata mix. Like your Correct. existing investors are exercising the pro rata to continue playing in the game. It's a little different right. from the company journey on two counts. One is your existing folks have to back you. Otherwise, new folks don't come in. Correct. It's That's the one big difference. Mm-hmm. And the second is here, the pro rata keeps, in that sense, growing. It doesn't yeah. shrink, right? right? Uh, in terms of absolute size. In right. most other par- company journeys, the numbers shrink as the company. Correct. Here, if you're really doing well, people just double down. Right. 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 And, and the possibility, because you're an allocation for them in terms of who they're giving capital to. It's not an investment in that sense. So, so it's a sharper J, J curve probably for a for a 
company like bloom right which is like so it compounds uh, very fast but the point is uh, you know it's one thing to put a certain amount of money out of your personal capital and give it to folks like bloom it's another thing to uh, join bloom right uh, and that early uh, team that came together uh, and i just remember it being so diverse right from across like spaces yeah. i mean uh, you and sanjay obviously like uh, poles apart as personalities then there was yeah. ashish who uh, again a very different uh, uh, you know uh, person so how was it like attracting talent in a time when this industry itself was not proven yes yeah, so it explains why we are a motley crew to to your mm. point right mm. uh, we were not offering a job uh, okay right yeah Next. so so mm. so the the bigger vcs were offering a job mm. meaning you had the security cover mm. right Here, the what security cover? You raised measly twenty million dollars. Makes yeah. hardly any fees, right? Two percent is fine, but it's nothing. Yeah. You have a budget of two crores to run your business for five, each for five years. Yeah. How is that a budget? And that includes everything, right? Yeah. And on what basis then are you attracting talent who wants to come and work for a decade, potentially? Mm. Okay. Mm. And so, essentially, what is that? What did I just say? It's a prescription for people joining and becoming co-founders at that. yeah and 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 we didn't have startup seed capital that you know even uh, you i know you were a co-founder of an institution but that seed capital is much larger in your case and even today the market is improved so you can attract really good founding teams with a 2 3 million dollar round we survived basically on 1 and 1/2 2 million dollars for 5 years right most of our companies mm-hmm. burn much more than we can ever burn in a year Correct. so we run mm-hmm. on a very frugal budget right and we still are just breaking out of that so the i think the job seeking team building has only started happening in 2018 mm. so prior to that what you were attracting was two three things i think uh it explains also why uh four out of the eight leadership folks are from times group in the same team that i ran right yeah. and so essentially like most good founding teams uh you have to have this cultural alignment mission alignment pre baked into the into the you know thinking right Yeah. So in the case of Sanjay and me you're right the very different personalities but it came from the same motivations we That's met right. through Mumbai Angels so mm-hmm. it was at least a format in which we understood our motivations for why we do what we do very well right mm-hmm. beyond that it was about what are we building towards and who's going to come and join that journey so mm-hmm. i don't know if you know this we have two three uh, i'm not able to sustain that hack anymore because people are impatient mm-hmm. but no person hired pre 20 16 17 was hired in less than 6 months oh, it took that much time wow. it was more like a dating exercise much like a, a, the two founders dated for yeah. a year before getting engaged right. and putting up first the first pitch deck that had sanjay and my name on the same deck took about 8 months from when we decided we want to talk to each other amazing right yeah. and so the same idea about anybody who joined hmm. blue right so ashish would keep dropping hints i would pick up some of them and i would say i really can't afford this guy you know he's saying he wants to join where do i have the money and not in first close yet and finally he's like how much more open should i say it and say okay <laughs> come on board but but like these are the risks right i don't know what i'm going to be able to promise you in 2015 right correct uh, this correct. is 2011 and this is what i have in my hand uh and yeah. so that's how sajid came that's how adit came uh and and uh, that's how arpit came so that's how we got started right mm. and arpit would ride in every trip i would take to delhi he would uh, ask if he could meet and i would say i have a car ride to noida and i thought right uh-huh. and and that's how we get to know each other and and then i say he says uh, what's what's the next step i said the next trip to delhi <laughs> <laughs> so so this this would keep going on and we did this with, like it was almost sound silly but we did this a lot even like a rohan came after a year of year and a half of spending time with the portfolio company because we said we can't afford it so i want people to be dead sure on why they choosing to come and join us yeah. and whether they're ready for this kind of a crazy entrepreneurial journey hmm. it's not sustainable anymore i think with yeah. sajid pai i think we've made the last of those bets in some sense hmm. kunal who's joined us as a senior person recently has known us for 10 years same thing mumbai angels connection yeah and so I think there's a little bit of that buy-in required if you're coming in at a senior level, for mm. sure. Mm. At a junior level, uh, you're grooming them, and now, thankfully, the brand attracts really good talent. You put an ad, you put a 
posting out and you get 200 great resumes now for every Correct. position. Correct. And, uh, and so that has changed. But in the early days, you're right. I think it was mission alignment, culture alignment. So mm -hmm. I, what I was realizing about my own form of entrepreneurship and what I wanted Bloom Culture to stand for mm. is essentially what I was testing these people for in these six-month journeys and saying, am I making a mistake or am I getting someone who's long-term aligned to how we think about uh, Bloom as a brand really, really uh, uh, in context of how I want them to be with the entrepreneurs. So for example, okay. if the person yeah. didn't know how to speak to an entrepreneur, it didn't matter how intelligent they were for my coming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the only that's the only that's the only thing we were selling actually. How does one crore change anybody's life, right? Even in the context of 2012, right. it's a start, but the capital is commoditized. I'll tell you honestly, in 11, 12, we lost deals on a one crore pre-money valuation business. Yeah, people are everyone is optimizing for yeah, absolutely the yeah. the, who's Bloom, right? Versus yeah. XYZ Angel Network, right? Yeah. yeah. And and only time will tell whether that was a foolish decision or they should have taken money from us and built a better company, right? Yeah. And and so the differentiation was that what what are we for entrepreneurs, mm. right? And and I'm trying to gauge every person to say, is this person going to stand up to that scrutiny? Very mm. tough, very tough. Mm. So which is why it took that long. The other hack, I don't want to necessarily make it public, but I'll, I'll kind of drop a hint. Go for it. That 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 uh, no, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a sort of a trade secret at Bloom. But basically, we we um, we actually put above a certain level. We mm. actually when they pass the internal test. Yeah. Today that means depending on the level, three to five people internally, mm -hmm. and there shouldn't be red flags, yellow flags on anyone. Uh, from anyone otherwise they don't pass the bar because we're spoiled for choice we're getting 200 resumes for a single position mm. you're spoiled for choice why are you making a mistake and saying oh, let's give benefit of doubt right mm. shouldn't yeah then we do a second level check with we pull in founder ecosystem as well interesting so you get the because, founders to talk to these folks yeah in twos and threes so basically what what it then allows us to do is the founder's impression of why they think we are the most loved VC, to your point, yeah. is somewhat calibrated and tested from their lens. Mm. Mm. Which is, yeah. so some founders say, really, you're asking us to do this? I said, yeah, these are the people who are going to service the next generation of you guys, right? Yeah. And yeah. do you think that they passed the Bloom test and, you know, from your lens? And... And there are founders who are critical of us and they say, mm. hey, you were a motley crew early on, but now... I'm now I'm exposed to somebody from Sequoia, Axel, Tiger, etc. Mm. I want the Bloom person to be Bloom culture code, mm. but as sharp as that person. Yeah. Not that we are not as sharp or as intelligent, but they they want all these appeal of everything yeah. packaged into one. Yeah. So bar has become much higher. But basically, we hope to pass those bars as well as we build out the team. So it's a new generation of building. The first ten years cannot be equated with the coming ten, but. I hope to sort of meet that bar with the new bloom that we're building. Well, I think it's really smart to co-opt the founders, right? Because in a way, they feel invested in bloom uh, uh, in in that sense, and then probably, hopefully, they'll bring the best deals. Uh, Absolutely. To bloom, and probably they do. Uh, you know, like I mean, somebody asked me in fourteen uh, or fifteen when they were evaluating us, they finally came into our fund in eighteen, hmm. and he said, uh, "Funds of your nature, the small funds, essentially." have a lot of them have like a mafia that they're attached to correct uh you know paypal mafias of the world or uber yeah. mafia like the yeah. deal sourcing for a small fund comes from networks which they're cornered in some sense right? correct so what's your mafia because you don't have any companies yet which are unicorns etc mm -hmm. you're not in you don't so i said there will be a bloom mafia someday <laughs> so <laughs> you just have to wait out for the four five years so they didn't believe us but i think it's happening fine yeah no, there is already a Bloom Mafia. I think uh, there's so much, like so many founders now exceptionally successful. Kabir at Dunzo, Vasant at Small Case, uh, Gaurav at An Academy. Like, you know, all of these phenomenal founders that you folks have backed. But, and on that, uh, Karthik, like what was, is there a common thread that you were looking for when you backed folks like these? Uh, because you said that, you know, as, a, as an entrepreneur yourself, you ended up backing other entrepreneurs who were like you. Uh, uh, so like, what is it that really worked for you? I know Gaurav speaks about the persistence with which he followed up, 
uh, with you folks over a very long period of time. Uh, is, so is persistence that thing that like uh, checks the big box for you or is it is it just the idea uh, or is it like different things for different uh, entrepreneurs that have worked? Yeah, I don't think um, formulas work as you you know. Entrepreneurship is, is lessons. I don't think it's formulas, right? So there are, and uh, the beauty of entrepreneurship is that I feel, and in fact, mm-hmm. I have a post waiting to be written this week. I'll share it with you when I'm done. Um, and you, when you read it, you'll see where the inspiration comes from. Um, I also feel like, so, but I'll, the, the punchline of that piece will be that you can build unicorns in very different ways. Hmm. That is, uh, uh, um, and that's after I have the courage to say that after I've, I have one and I'm, there's going to be two more in this quarter. Hmm. Um, and after seeing these trajectories and the people you, some of them you pointed out are not yet unicorns, but I'm sure they will become, hmm. right? Hmm. And the trajectories are all very different. Hmm. All five are actually very different. The ones I'm going to, uh, the, the, the three that are going to become and, and the two that you mentioned, right? Hmm. And so what it uh, taught us, and it takes time to learn this. I mean, if anybody told you in 13, 14, they know that how to, how they can. specifically to do this, they're bullshitting. Mm. Uh, they still be bullshitting, I'll tell you why. Because the ratio, the loss and win ratios have broadly not changed in 60 years of venture capital. Mm. Mm. So if they were, if, if formulas were as clean and specific as you're asking me to outline them, mm. then we would have gotten much better at this no? as an industry. Mm. Yeah. How come it doesn't happen, right? Because the reality is you leave the founders to their own will for 23 and a half hours of the day. Mm. The investor inter- engagement and intrusions are only 30 minutes a day, sir, on average for the right. whole month, right? right? So the founder has got to go back and be capable of doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that is, and therefore no founders can be identical, but they share common traits to your point, right? So if you go back in the, I'll also weave in uh, the mistakes we made in fund one because we mm. cut 60, 70 checks and we basically experimented a lot, but mm. tiny checks though. Mm. The clever way of, uh, if you look at it from portfolio modeling and construction, which people don't give us credit for, my stop losses were always super tight. I yeah. couldn't have lost much money, right? Yeah. And people don't ever understand that I was doing a boatload of learning for very, very little capital. Nobody yeah. has done that much learning with that little capital in this country, period, uh-huh. right? And so... Um, Never, uh, no one's ever appreciated that. But the mistakes on that lot were, to your, you raised that point from the very first sentence, you were looking for people like you. Mm. So we were looking for two things, actually, where we were projecting. Because we had an entrepreneur gene, we were expressing our gene through them and said, yeah. yes, sincere hai, high perseverance hai, integrity hai, cheating nahi karega, paise nahi duvaega. And then, the second lens of that, which is also flawed, is uh, kya idea hai? Mene socha tha par, so idea socha tha. Right? Yeah. So, th- therefore, I love this guy because he walked into my room and told me the same idea that I've been thinking about. That's mm. the thrill of early stage venture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you're you reading the tea leaves, you're flipping through The Economist, you're reading a trend in China, you're reading some okay. trend in technology and you say, this is bound to happen. So, that and positive then, affirmation, you sort of, uh, the moment you find it, you latch onto it. Yeah. Too early, too early mm. sometimes, right? Mm. Uh, too early because your market is not timed for this and too early because you might pick the wrong entrepreneur on the right idea. Yeah. Oh my God, there's so many examples of that in front one, it's not funny. Right? Mm. And it continues to happen because it's not a perfect world and you can't go and scour every entrepreneur in a particular area that you like. Mm. However, we've gotten better at it. So if mm. we like a, a thesis area now, we actually write it, present it to IC, go out and chase such founders. So that's how we're solving the idea problem, right? We're saying A, at a a investor level in the team, you got to get super focused Hmm. on which ideas you uh, chase because you got to be like top decile in the country on having a thought leadership on this this Hmm. space. Hmm. You can't be behind uh, Sequoia, Bessemer, Tiger. Yeah. How does it matter was they put 100 million before you blink into those companies. Yeah, yeah. So you got to be ahead of them. So Mm -hmm. that will happen only with specialization. So that's one way to solve it, right? Mm -hmm. So picking founders, it's not about picking founders. It's about picking uh, founders who share a vision of a very large market build out much ahead of the rest of the market. The mistake Mm -hmm. we were making in fund one was sometimes they were three years, four years ahead. 
And sometimes mm-hmm. when you picked without looking at the rest of the market, you were picking the wrong founder. Yeah. Because there, there was a smarter founder who was actually better timed or better equipped who uh, would walk through the door six months later and mm-hmm. we would miss him. So mm-hmm. Misha was like that for us. My mm-hmm. mail actually says, hey, we have too much deals in this space. I don't think we'll be able to do it because of competition, mm-hmm. uh, right? And mm-hmm. never even met the guy, right? Uh-huh. And my reply from the intro that came from Navin Tiwari. So it's embarrassing, but that's the true, truth, right? Yeah. And so you got to be careful on that. And that's one, that's a systemic problem that you want to solve. Mm-hmm. But the original question you asked around founders, it is all of what you said. It's perseverance. It is ambition. It is uh, capability. But however, there are a lot of nuances in everything. Right? Mm-hmm. One is ability to sell the mission. Mm-hmm. Not just believe it yourself. Yeah. Because, and yes, there is a, a critical view of this key. Some uh, Selu founders go to VCs, you know, sell a sexy story and raise money. It's not about the VCs. I don't care that much about it. Of course, it matters that you have to sell a great story to get a tiger or a sequoia excited. Mm. But it's not that. It's about, can you sell it to your team members? Yeah, can you absolutely. sell uh, to who comes and joins you as a co-founder, right? Uh, so if you don't have that, how are you going to build legendary 10-year companies. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And and, and so the the core DNA has got to be incredible capacity to believe and sell a mission. Hmm. Uh, Two, incredible ability to listen to the customer problem that you're chasing. Hmm. Therefore, two levels of issues, two nuances there. You have to be so married to the problem Hmm. that as it's as important as your marriage, actual marriage to your spouse. Hmm. Correct. Okay. You have to believe in it and uh, not get married to the solution, I guess. So that is, yeah, that used to be, I used to say that in the first five years. Now I, I even disregard anybody who starts with that theory is absolutely lost because mm-hmm. I've seen every plan change, every product change in the first 12 months. Correct. You're going through the journey. So you'll tell me how it went in uh, another six months, right? So then what are you married to? You're married to how to solve the problem, right? Which then means the best founders are literally here to the ground all day, Mm. whenever they get a chance, right? Mm. They're going onto the market, they're going to the street, they're understanding it, they're able to touch and feel the problem, Mm. which is why sometimes VCs struggle to figure out the intercity is going bus transport. Mm. VC, you have bus last time. Correct. Ah, So... (laughs) So you can't even relate to the problem, right? And that they're not able to sometimes, we see sometimes don't fund these businesses because they don't relate to it at all. Whereas entrepreneurs should live, breathe and relate to it all the time. Mm. If you're listening then to the customer, then I think you get outstanding outcomes in my view, mm. right? And those journeys pay off even if they fail because mm. you would have built a company worth somebody else buying. It will be a suboptimal outcome, but it'll still be a journey worth having. And then a lot of those founders, especially if they come from a technology area that they love, they'll go build another great company in that space after this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, and, I think... And, and the last... Yeah. yeah sorry, sorry. Last point on that is incredible capacity to learn from other people and learn to discern what inputs and outputs to take from others' learnings and knowing their DNA, hmm. which is where the big differences come. Not every founder can listen to uh, Vijay Shekhar or Deepinder and Gaurav Munjal and get excited about how to play, copy their playbook. How will, you don't have that characteristic. How can you? Whereas a SaaS founder can build quietly a billion dollar company by mechanically, clinically going at it like a surgeon and, and hitting it out of the park and building a hundred million dollar revenue company. So mm-hmm. play, you have to play to, we have a term for it in the VC world, there's a jargon for everything. It's also founder market fit, right? It's right. also founder product fit. So it's essentially, you will not fund somebody who walks through the door and says, you know, I've built a, a, a consumer business. Now I'll build a SaaS business and vice versa. Not that I, I want to be rule bound by that, but a lot of the time, it's not easy to transcend the two. Correct. No, and you know, uh, everything that you said has been spoken before, but the point on the selling thing is interesting, uh, Karthik, because... In India, we it's almost like neglected uh, the fact that you constantly need to be selling, not only as a founder, but even otherwise, right? I mean, yeah. we grew up in a time when we were told that you just like do your thing, do it really well, and then you'll be proven. But I guess uh, one big takeaway for, for me from this is the fact that you're constantly selling, whether it is to the team, whether it is to 
uh, VCs, whether it is to vendors even that, you know, they should prioritize your work over and why you will become such a big company that they will regret not having worked for you. Uh, yeah. so, so I think that that thing is very important. And you spoke about like, is Misho that anti-portfolio uh, uh, that you think about? Plenty, or... plenty of them, plenty of the Misho, Zetworks. I, I'll tell you what, my book is an anti-portfolio actually. So they're not anti-portfolio. Misha and Zetworks are bizarrely process anti-portfolio. Mm -hmm. We never met the founder. Mm -hmm. right? we, we, yeah. we failed on the uh, written communication itself. Mm. Right? So we fixed a lot of processes post-2018 because the process was failing us. Mm. Right? Um, that's a different story and again a trade secret, so I won't reveal that. But we get about 600, 700 founders met between the five of us this, in a year now mm. uh, because we fixed the process dramatically. So mm -hmm. no referred founder gets missed by Bloom anymore, mm -hmm. right? at least for a conversation. To me, the genuine mark of an anti-portfolio is when you met the founder, mm -hmm. you had a shot at taking the check bet, not, and this is also non-trivial. So for example, I'd met the Swiggy founders when they were bundled mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. on a rooftop in UB City. And I said, one more courier company, I don't think so, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think I'd already we'd just made the bet on runner. Or, no, this was before runner perhaps. But like, I didn't think we were going to play. Mm -hmm. And then we were 250k check writers. Mm -hmm. And they probably went and got, I don't know the exact history, but they went, probably got a million dollars from Axel. Mm -hmm. Freshworks, same thing. We were in the running, a, a part of some angel syndicate. And then Axel came and gave a million dollars. They're out of the reckoning. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't flog myself saying this is anti-portfolio, mm -hmm. right? That's mm. like saying Kunal Shah is anti-portfolio. So Kunal is a nice guy. I know him. I spoke to him while he was building it. If I had 5-10 million, I would have asked him whether he would let me into the round. Mm. Correct. With 500k, I mm. right? so, yeah. uh, so these are, uh, we were asked to do an exercise by one of our anchor investors and we went through the 25-30 companies in 17-18. Mm. So it is 70-80% of them are a mix of this nature. They're either yeah. too late, they get bootstrapped and they come too late to the market if you don't get a shot at them. They mm. raise a very large round, you don't get a shot at them. Mm. They're an alum of uh, an Axel company, so they went to Axel and got the check. Mm. How is that anti-portfolio boss? That you never had a shot at it. So anti-portfolio is when you came, had a look at it, proper look at it, mm. and you failed to read the thesis of the founder that it will become very big. Hmm. Hmm. And that's a failure on somebody in the leadership team to have not picked that signal up or that queue up. Yeah. So we're trying to minimize that going forward. But there are many people like that, as I said, we've met uh, uh, Ritesh twice before we said no to Oyo. Uh, we'd met Ola. We'd said, he liked us. We liked him. But then Tiger came and cut the check. It was hmm. game set match. Hmm. Um, and then we went and did. Uh, we were also we were looking at Taxi for sure. We liked that team a lot. Mm. And, and then we managed to squeak into that round, which Axel and Helium led. Mm. So various things happen like of that nature. Uh, but basically the ingredients that you asked about did appeal to us, which is why we chased some founders more. Mm. And in some cases, you might not read it well because it's a Zoom call now or whether yeah. you didn't meet the founder. How can you make a judgment call? That was our biggest learning from the process failures. Mm. But this oh, this thing about, you know, you're almost like bracing for failure, right? So there is uh, there are errors of omission and commission uh, in the VC space. And especially in the stage which you are at or yeah. going after. At the early stage, yeah. Uh, the potential for failure is much, much higher. And then to, uh, I mean, the number of successes will be low and they will compensate for all the failures. That's right. But in just Classic in absolute terms, in number terms, the uh, number of failures will be much higher and therefore like motivating the team through this, like, you know, you're like seeing companies die more than you're seeing companies succeed. Yeah. And then you're picking them up and saying that, look, yeah, this happens in the business and you get on to the next investment. How yeah. does that yeah. process work? It's gut wrenching. I mean, you know, um, even with one crore losses, mm. right? Uh, that's what like an average Series A company burns today in a month, right? Uh, <laughs> with a one crore, the first time the losses hit, the first write downs happened as early as 2012. Yeah. 18 months into the fund. And then various things hit you. It says, like, your, to your point, it's a power law business. You read about it, but now you're experiencing, experiencing it. it. Yeah. Um, the losses come way ahead of the game. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, uh, purple is breaking out today. 
yeah. it was a 13 company and it's massively breaking out today but like there's a graveyard of companies prior to that right yeah. Yeah. so the, the good news as you rightly said is empirical evidence points to the fact that it's a power law business mm. five six will pay for all the mistakes of whether it's a 20 in a 25 company portfolio or 40 in a 50 company portfolio mm. this five six will pay for all of them yeah. how does it happen and and so that's what we are trying to fix in our heads right mm. we're just saying hoga for various reasons like mm. fund 3 and we try to iterate this better in every fund mm. and say why is it happening in every fund but you can't control it and I, i'll tell you you have to reconcile with it at some point the mm. causes for those failure are very high but you asked me a different question so how do you reconcile to it for me the there were two steps of reconciliation which troubled me one was losing the money Hmm. the more important thing was losing the time yeah because because you can't get that the same amount of time yeah it's the same amount of time you're distributing across that many companies hmm. and then after a year of bloody hard work one just vanishes hmm. right i said what the hell was i doing like i've like skipped sunday breakfast with my kid to spend time with his entrepreneur and he just blew up yeah right and so it changed a lot of things around bloom it allowed us to get more focused in concentration of portfolio not just because lp said is a good idea but because you want to spend time with yeah. every company very thoughtfully for one mm. number two you want to it changes your perspective on can each bet you make have a mm. shot in hell of returning the fund mm. you might say kya bol rahe ho 1% probability hai but hai kya 1% if it is below 1% then please don't play it because the entrepreneur skewed or in in that pitch or whether the idea is cute in terms of it's uh, you know it's a nice cute app don't mm. play it's a waste of time mm. right so so it changes your thinking around and that's what the mistakes of fund one were right you, at that point you said what unicorns there was no term like that by the way and then people would say if it gets to 50 million i'll own uh, 8% of it i'll make 4 million it's a 20 million dollar fund it's a decent outcome yeah yeah but that's an interesting thing to like apply that. right filter to apply it's, that you say so very quickly what happened was once you get to 60 to 100 million and mm. when you look at sandeep the math around the next guy picking up the company mm. right the next guy picking up the company is looking for a 1 to 10 journey of that fund mm. they don't appreciate the fact that you got them from 0 to 1 mm. they Correct. don't care they don't care it's like time pass like they're saying will this founder take the company from 1 to 10 yeah and then he said what was i thinking trying to measure them for 0 to 1 right right what 0 to 2 what 0 to 3 no i have to find a founder who can build 0 to 10 Correct. and that when you put those lenses and then when you pick very deeply and then when you take enough ownership now because the ownership thing changed because of the time honestly that not just because it. of the yeah. yeah because like i'm spending so much time i i want to be paid for my time yeah even if it means playing another half a million dollars extra Mm. I'll pay for my time, but I'll play for my time, right? Mm. So I want now fifteen percent. I will not settle for seven, eight percent, mm. right? So all of this then changes the model. We became twenty-five companies, more concentrated, mm. but the lens is sharper now. That every company you pick, and now the math mm. of a hundred or hundred and fifty million dollar fund, which is a fund three and four, is that if they don't make a unicorn, you don't return much money because you'll own very little when they get to that stage. Yeah. Therefore, the lens on day one is a unicorn. Bana sakta hai nahi. Hmm. Hmm. And that sharpens up your mind on many, many counts. It's a crude hmm. way of objectifying this, and therefore, some young college kid who's very smart hmm. will get left out because you think about it and say, really, this kid will shape up to become, you know, the next Dipinder, Gaurav, you know, uh, Munjal, etc. Hmm. Look stuff from what I'm seeing. Yeah. Right. They have high energy, but they might not get there. Will they get to 50 million? Hundred million, yeah, potentially. They look really smart. They can get there. Does yeah. it move the needle? No, it does not move the needle. Mm. So, from ironically, even a sub fifty million dollar exit is a failure mark in the portfolio. Yeah, because it did not move the needle on the success metric. Yeah, yeah. So the sum total of all the non fives winners in every top decile portfolio in the last thirty years is less than ten fifteen percent of the gross returns. so which okay. which portfolio company comes from nobody asks it's a footnote yeah right yeah. so say oh you're giving me five more bucks on the 100 after, after giving me 350 it's okay i'll take it hmm. nobody asks who gave that five right 
right and so what are you working so hard on that 54 right and so the other extreme way of looking at this is you need to start telling out your time your bandwidth your capital allocation so i know you know this but for the audiences only 30 odd percent of our capital goes into those initial bets because the mistakes are made there mm-hmm. and the bulk of the capital is in reserves and in an early stage fund i think the mantra is just keep doubling down on those 5 10 winners yeah. right some will get to 2 300 million some will get to 2 3 billion but that's where you want 70% of your capital and time to be spent right it's interesting that you you talk about more about optimizing for time than optimizing for capital right and then that's an interesting thought process from a vc perspective right i think uh, in an early stage vc what i said might be true for a tiger it might not be right because they don't have to spend the time right Correct. they're getting into a company where a lot of things are fleshed out yes teams are boards are yes. somebody's taking care of the oversight everything in my case all of that is raw is raw and that time spent is time spent really coaching people right i think coaching the entrepreneur coaching the teams uh, around the entrepreneur i i you know i wonder like how is it uh, like guiding somebody who's really in the arena i think uh, so the person in the arena is playing his own game you're sitting outside and i know you wrote about the playbook uh, netflix series but how how does that work is it like uh, frus- isn't it frustrating sometimes and you see are yaar you know if i was there i would have done this but now i have to get him or her to do something else without telling him as much you know if you if you if you look at thanks for alluding to that i enjoyed that series i'm wondering when the second season will come and for me writing it was not it was it felt repetitive for a lot of people but i also realized a lot of people don't like sports avidly enough to watch the series so i was transcribing in some sense for them hmm. but it helped me think through all of the elements that you are speaking about which is what are the challenges of a coach hmm. because that coach it's whether it's a life coach whether it's a mental health a coach whether it is a uh sports coach whether it is a vc coach it's the same problem hmm. you're not in the maidan right the other person has to go deal with their life after the one hour session yeah right uh, at least in a sports game they're actually on the sidelines yeah here i'm not on the sidelines right hmm. the founders taken the board inputs left the room and then they're on their own again correct right correct so uh, you get so by the way we are on the sideline sometimes when we are back channeling with investors hmm. and we are guiding them on whatsapp on what to say in a meeting and what so you are doing on real time also coaching sometimes okay. right but a lot of it is not real time it is more uh, almost 6 months in advance kind of coaching hmm. Hmm. you want you are hoping that what you see today becomes their behavior 6 to 12 months from now right you know you have to invest that sort of commitment absolutely from- absolutely people don't change they have to absorb the idea that it is their idea that's the entrepreneur's ego and the entrepreneur's failing yeah right yeah. and and uh, until that happens you've actually not done your job as a coach right right, right. and we therefore we over index to various questions you've asked in this hour the over index on ability to win founders trust founder empathy right uh, ability to understand the problem from their shoes hmm. right It's okay for you to pontificate. What the hell do you know? What they're going through? Hmm. Yeah. Right. And and there, which is where you realize you're always out of time, and that's why it takes time, right? Because that's not about a email or a WhatsApp chat or a phone call or a board input. It's hmm. about actually once in a while taking the time to go have a beer with them and understand what else is bugging them in their lives, right? Hmm. And it's very taxing because it's time away from your family, right? You're you're playing. you're counseling them like a uh, a uh, a kid their brother uh, you know a friend everything right and and um, and those journeys keep changing so yes the best founders then upgrade their coaches also hmm because they have different challenges let's say they've outgrown what they wanted to see in the first two years of the journey yeah. then they're looking at like, how the hell do i grow this from whatever little i've done to 10x the size now Right? right and they need to go to someone who's been there done that and who can play a good coach hmm. uh, gorov is spectacular at going and finding those coaches for himself right at hmm. an academy um all the others are now we've learned from that how hmm. good he is at and then we advocate those playbooks to others now yeah yeah right and so you're learning so i think coaching <clears throat> in itself is a playbook that keeps evolving yeah. and i would argue that the base ingredients are almost absolutely necessary 
they're essential sufficient uh, they're necessary but not sufficient yeah so the base ingredients is what we over index for inside the team hmm and then mm. we try to grow up with our best companies to develop skills to become a better coach yeah right yeah. and that's and if you don't enjoy that journey then you'll be a terrible early stage vc i think or any like at any point right i guess you're like... you know, in the later stages i have mixed feelings about this some people do treat this as a money manager job right i i don't think i i think you're overestimating whether everybody thinks that way. i think there are i'm not saying there are not vcs at late stage who don't enjoy this mm. but i don't think they sit as coaches like if you look at uh late stage founder coaches there actually more other founders mm got it makes sense yeah and this a vc is run a billion dollar company what what are they going to tell you we are going to tell you what we have learned from others i keep saying this vc score strength is pattern matching of all kinds yeah in picking mm. in learning in coaching in giving advice it's all pattern matching and so much of entrepreneurship is breaking out of patterns right you know so it's that's why i said you, the trick is to customize from your learnings which pattern to advocate to a particular vc uh, yeah. to a entrepreneur yeah because otherwise yeah. you'll fall into the trap of advocating some bs which is non applicable to 8 out of 10 founders yeah so you are if you make it formulaic you're screwed yeah yeah pattern matching is got to be customized correct correct right. and a curation of that is makes i think a great it's also <laughs> we keep joking we tell vc we tell founders tum vc ko madad puchho na that's the gene you want to express because vc wants to help right a really good genuine vc wants to help right, right. and the right. kick comes from right maine thoda madad kiya right, right. post right. check the kick comes from that right, right. post check you're done na paise jitna dena tha de diya aapne right what is the rest of the kick <laughs> right right because you can watch the journey but you want to know that the, you mattered in the founder's journey yeah right and yeah. and so when so if you actually customized and won them over and the founder says thanks that was a great insight or this helped me or i cracked this whether they give you credit for it in public or private after that doesn't matter aapka self kick thoda ban gaya ki maine thoda kiya right and that's that's basically the 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 the, the job but also in one sense i feel like there's a book the job. there's a book in there somewhere karthik uh, coaching no there are a lot of books but yeah no time yeah. to write them but at some this, point that's and, and i'll just wrap with this uh, karthik is this you know you're this aggressive on one hand investor investing in high risk assets uh, your career and your life is linked to that how does karthik reddy personally invest like uh, how do you pair the sort of balance of risk or uh, or 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 is it like is it like two independent things when you think about as of now it's two independent things uh, it's like a, like most entrepreneurs who have not bro- don't break out for a certain period of time i'm not yet there to be very honest right my first carry in life i saw earlier this year when we part exited fund one and um, and prior to that i'd done too many experiments with my with angel investing with that entrepreneurial gig that i didn't really save up much like right? mm-hmm. us education on a loan by the time i repaid it and got out of the country so i haven't had too much money is it good for good or for bad right mm-hmm. and therefore investing has just been hey i might need it for a rainy day just put it into a you know literally deposits and uh, insurance and things like that to security because mm-hmm. i know my family sort of you know craves for that given all the mad risk i'm taking on this project right. so uh, currently it's over indexed on in security in just secure assets which have very very low returns because i feel i'm like it's almost feels like i'm 99 to 1 in terms of indexation on my current life i'm all in on my job right absolutely uh, i'm all in on capital every dollar we could have saved by taking a little bit extra from the fees is my founder contribution back to the gp contribution back to the funds because yeah. my lps want to see skin in the game i don't have too much cash so whatever little we can take from our fees is also in the fund correct so I'm all in all in all in i'm in as from a carry rewards perspective i'm in from a reinvestment perspective so i the basically 2024 25 is when this might change but because those are my big paydays on funds 1 and 2 like mm-hmm. right? all the vehicles that we raised between 11 and uh, 16 17 all of them will mature at the same time yeah. extensions opportunity funds core fund so when that payday arrives i'll rethink this problem but right now i don't have bandwidth or 
the luxury of money in the bank to be able to think but of it. It's amazing, uh, like you know, fully invested, all in, going deep. I think it's uh, lots to learn, uh, Karthik. Thank you so much. I, this has been such a real conversation. Uh, we've learned a lot, uh, and who knows? Maybe we'll uh, we'll encourage you to put out a book around some of these things. But so, someday soon, hopefully. Thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity and allowing it, me to keep it real. Also, Sandeep, great questions. Enjoyed this. Best of luck to deserve. I know you're building a phenomenal product out there for folks like me. And I was actually thinking, you know, we don't have too much. Maybe I'm the right customer. With you know, my parents have to manage their little bit that they have in their nest egg. And uh, I know you're building for that kind of an audience today. And so, hopefully, be a customer soon. I haven't onboarded yet. But yeah. Uh, we'll correct that very soon, Karthik. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks for doing. Thanks this. a lot. Bye.